Heads or tails? A 50-50 probability. Imagine this deadly game of chance where no matter what, somebody dies. But this isn't the Squid Games. There is no winner. So, heads or tails? All right, welcome to Talk Murder Me. This is the interesting case of Randy Stair. I don't know who Randy Stair is. Should I? No one really knows who Randy Stair oh, is. okay. This is just another mass shooting that happened that we don't even remember these days because there's so fucking many of them. Isn't that terrible? <laughs> That's, That's pretty fucking bad. sad. It's pretty bad. <laughs> but anyway, um, this is the story of Randy Stair. Cool. I hate you. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> Thanks for listening to wow. me. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> and that is the end of this podcast. <laughs> We're about to hit 300 episodes. I know. I don't even remember the 200 episode. I think I was just too drunk. And we'll say, I'm going to dedicate this shot to us. No, what? Don't we have someone real to dedicate this? Surprise shots. Surprise shots. We don't know what they are because they're a surprise. It looks ominous, doesn't it? It looks like Midori. If this is that Midori shit, y'all have got to do better, man. Nicole's we going drink to the liquor same store next week shit time 16. Every fucking time we do this shit. She's going next week, she said for real. <laughs> for real. You need to mix it with sour mix or sp- and or sprite. Also, like, I'm not the only one that has to pick the shots, so. Yeah, you can pick them, John. I pick them sometimes, but I haven't been on my game as recently. I picked them last week for one of the stories. I'm not supposed to get in the liquor cabinet, apparently. Uh Uh-oh. (laughs) Uh-oh. Because I'm a horn dog when I'm drunk. (laughs) Well... Oh shit! And then I fire up my only OnlyFans account, start filming. <laughs> <There is. laughs> Got to pay the bills. You know All right, what? fuck it. I want to start this episode by watching this video. It's the perfect place to start it. It's going to tell you exactly what we're dealing with tonight. I put all of these videos and everything, and there's a ton. This dude was a YouTuber. This guy was a YouTuber, so he's got a lot of videos. And what the thing about these videos is they'll get taken down. So people download them. But here's the thing, guys. Someone actually has to go download them because we don't want them to get lost. Does that make sense? Yeah. We, I mean, we, like we they're all them important there. parts of the Yeah, cases. exactly. We don't want just Twitter or whatever just to delete them and then they're gone forever. So, but... But you think, oh, if it's on the internet, it'll always be there. That's not the case. People like me download this shit, put it on my hard drive, so that if it ever is off the internet, that I can put it back on the internet. Because well, people well, do need to see this. Because if you want to figure out the psychology of this guy and why the fuck he did this, you need to see all his YouTube videos. Well, can I ask a question? How does the Wayback Machine work then? Like, it just... Mm. No, that's a really good question. So, Wayback Machine works with websites a post myspace post all that shit but not videos it doesn't save videos it's, it's too much too many gigabytes and stuff for it to save does that make sense if it saved every video it'd be like out of business because it'd be so much server space does that make sense yeah i hope they don't delete the the video of um like a couple of saturday night live videos oh that's gone no. What what are you talking about Saturday Night Live videos? Well, a couple of my favorite original YouTube videos. No, they're all going to be there. I'm talking about like little obscure things like this. Like these shooter videos. Because he's had a whole YouTube channel. So Well, f- sometimes when I look up the video with the digital short about Andy, Andy Samberg punching people before eating, like it's hard to find. <sighs> How many times do you look that up? I mean, I've looked it up several times in the past few years, but it's my. This is how I am. This is how. This is. No, but it's my. It's like my favorite SNL digital short. 
And if, if you haven't seen it, I definitely recommend it. I don't think I have. It. Well, you can probably buy it at ComedyCentral.com. Well, I'm not buying anything. No affiliation. ComedyCentral.com slash talk murder. I mean, I've podcast. been watching. <laughs> we, we are not affiliated with them. We but, should be affiliated with Comedy Central because they need to monopi- mon- monopize. Monopi- monetize. Monetize. <laughs> that sounds delicious. <laughs> monopize. <laughs> okay. So here's the deal. This haircut's terrible. Uh, 1983 quarter right here. Oh boy. Is it magic trick? Do you believe in fate? Nope. Here's the yes. fate test. I'm gonna flip this three times. Or the best out of three, rather. And if it's heads, I'll do it here. If it's tails, supermarket. He's what? what? The, the, do what? The case is of Randy Stare. Before he killed himself, he shot up a supermarket. But before he did that, he filmed this video. So this video is heads or tails. If it is heads, I'll kill myself here. Two out of three. And if it's, yeah, two out of three. And if it's tails, I'll kill people at a supermarket and then I'll kill myself there. That is what this video well, is. Well, that's okay. fucked up. I so already don't deal. like this guy. Got a 1983 quarter right here. Why 1983? Here's the fate test. So either way, he knew he was going to kill times. himself. Yeah, he knew he was going to kill himself. Three. Well, that's sad. If it's heads, I'll do it here. If it's tails, supermarket. And this was all uploaded so. to YouTube. I, th- what's Did re- he have followers on YouTube? Yeah, yeah. His nostrils are very flared. <sighs> Can I ask really... what type of content he posted before this? No, I'm going to show you. What's really interesting about this case right off the bat, what makes this case really unique right off the bat is no one and and ever, no one has ever had the fate of human life that I know at least rest upon a coin flip. You know what I'm saying? Right. The coin flip here, you guys understand, it landed on tails. But if it would have landed on heads, we would not be doing this story because it would have been another There's suicide. A suicide yeah. It would have been another suicide. But the fact that it landed on tails is the... Now, I shouldn't say is the reason because the reason is him. He carried out the action. But in his mind, as we're going to get to, that firmly planted... The conviction that he was supposed to carry this out. It was fate. I just want to know if, like, he actually... I mean, we didn't watch the rest of the video, but did he... We have to watch it. God dang it. I just have a question. All right, go ahead. Like, did he actually film all three, like, consecutively? Yeah, just watch the damn video. It's only five minutes. But it's... He really so films everything. Outside. I get what Jen's asking. She's asking, did he cut the video to make it? Thank you. You know me. Flip. Oh, shit. That's really loud. It's also very bright. Sorry, that was way too loud. Where is this located? We're in Pennsylvania. Sorry, yeah. We're in Pennsylvania. I didn't even know that you said that, but I was thinking Pennsylvania. Isn't that weird? His haircut, you know. I will say, let me pause the video right quick, that before the shooting... And and this, even before he knew he was going to shoot up the supermarket and everything else, and I'll talk about his history, but he goes down this spiral down and he starts to idolize who? Who does he kind of look like? For months he had planned this and he started, I'm going I'm to talk about his whole downward spiral, but he started idolizing the Columbine shooters and not only idolizing them, but sympathizing with them. You'll see in one photo, he's wearing a shirt that says natural selection. He actually got that shirt created. That was the same shirt that I believe it was uh, Kyle Bolt. Was his name Kyle Bolt? I didn't, I didn't do that story. The, the main shooter. He was wearing that natural selection shirt. So, well, and, and can I just say to sympathize with the killer that that's just that's almost heartbreaking to me because you understand you're trying you're saying like you understand what type of pain they're going through, but the fact that he would go this far is also a different story. So. Well, as you'll notice in this video, he's very careful about not cutting 
the camera. So he he wants the audience to know that there was no camera tricks or anything that he flipped it and it was fate. That that's why he's picking up the camera and he never cuts it. It's important to right. him. There it is. That's the tails. See that? Clearly tails. Clearly tails. It's, can you pause one. for a second just so I can make a point? I just think it's kind of eerie that like you hear um, like the peace, like if you're out there without oh, yeah, this the going peaceful, on, yeah. like the birds chirping and being outside and the silence and that going, that's kind of like eerie oh, to what's yeah, about dude. to happen. Oh yeah. I mean, because like the gravity of what's going on right now, I want you guys to understand the lives. There's three people that are murdered with the shooting plus himself. So four, he kills himself. So four altogether, but three innocent, I guess you would say. Mm -hmm. But what's really crazy. I mean, there's a lot of crazy things about this case we'll get into, but what's really crazy right off the bat is those three individuals who are, this is two months before the murders, they're going on with their lives. Um, the youngest is spending time with her son, you know, just doing what they do. At the same time, this guy is flipping a coin, and that coin toss is the and that coin toss is for telling whether they live or die. It's there, so fucked up if you think about it. There's so much grab like gravity to it. That's what I'm saying. That's what is crazy about this case, man. If you really dive into it. That's why I wanted to start with the coin flip because the coin, I mean, if the coin would have landed on heads the last time he would have just killed himself. I 100% believe that. And and you're going to believe that too. He's not, that's, this case has really got me thinking about um, mass murderers. He wasn't going to be a mass murderer unless the coin hit a certain way. You know what I'm saying? Which is fucking insane to me you know i don't but know at the same time the fact that he entertained the idea of being a mass murderer versus just killing himself it i just that's I just, what's fucking crazy because you've never seen something like that like if you look at columbine they were playing it yeah i want to kill this many people boom 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 all the other shootings oh well, yeah, yeah I let's mean, kill this many columbine, people they had they had they wanted to to do what they did so i, I mean just finish i mean I there's can, only I can't one just, there's only one there's only one thing that this guy was going to do anyway and that's kill himself it's just the point of him taking people with him. And I'll put a lot of the quotes on talkmer.com because I watched all the videos. I pulled some of the, the eerie, eerie, eerie quotes looking back on it. it oh, man, it, it's, well, it's I, deep. I mean, honestly, like, I, you know me. I'm not one to just, like, refrain my opinion, opinion, but, like, I can't wait to see what else has, like... Not in a, like a happy way, but like obviously, I want to see. I cannot. I, I just want to watch oh, the rest yeah. of this, this and, and see what you have to say man. because so far, like it, it's 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 kind of wild. Cut. This case I'm is not going to touch the tripod, crazy the camera, only just to show you. That is it. See how no other cutting. adamant he is about no other cutting. no other cutting. It's one flip. And like, there's cars driving by. I mean. The, just you look as at his. We'll see it for the first time. You as I will see it for the first time. Just look how he's he's saying that. He's just like, this isn't my decision, guys. I I'm not going to personally want to kill people. This is fate. This is what the coin will say, dude. It's fucked. Like I've never seen some shit like this, man. This is why we don't want to get these videos. It had to be right. Not saved, right? I mean. Think about it. If the wind had blown slightly one degree southwest or if his thumb would have slipped or whatever, three people, three people with children and grandchildren, some of them would still be alive. 
fucking nuts, man. I mean, you don't think that's crazy? Here we go. Oh, it's a Tails. That's Tails. You can see it. The can you pause that real quick? On this is going all sorts of wonky. I just want to, like, he sounds excited about the fact that it's a Tails. Which is really no, he, depraved I, to me. No, he... Yeah. Oh, it's a Tails! Like, I like how do you, like... He's, like, feeding into, like, the internet sensationalist that he is. But, no, at, no, the, no, but he, at the same time, he, I, and I'm not... I am not trying to feed into to a conspiracy or anything, but when you talk about the the fact that a coin flip is 50-50, but there's also the, the phrase, Tails never fails. Have you heard that phrase before, Tails never fails? I mean... When when NFL teams flip I, a coin, I, most I, of them who have the choice of flipping will pick fail uh, will tick will pick tails because of the phrase tails never fails because I think the weight of the tails is a little bit heavier than the weight of the heads. And, I don't know, uh, man. But, I, I, but, but 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 listen, interesting. The probability. So, was so the fact that he picked heads as just himself and tails as killing other people is a little bit depraved to me. The well, uh, not even That's just that. Not even just that. But the fact that he, I mean, the whole fact that he's flipping a coin to see if he's going to p- kill people or just kill himself is depraved to me. And, and it feels like there's a lot other stuff going on in his head, but. But just the fact that he hmm. made that choice of instead of saying, well, if there's two heads, I'm going to go to the grocery store versus two I think tails, it was random, though. I, just but, watching all his videos, I think he was sincere. And I think because, I mean, he could have filmed this 10 times until he got all tails or whatever. But I I think just watching his videos that. I. I don't know, man. But still, but I mean, interesting though, Jen. Like, there's sure there's superstitions of like what people want to pick, but I didn't know that there was like potentially a rumor of a slight weight or whatever. But maybe so. That's interesting. If I but to counteract that, if I flip a coin, I don't know that tails never fails thing. So I'm gonna pick heads because I think that heads is the going to be the winner. So maybe he was picking heads because he didn't want to kill people. You know what I'm saying? Honestly, he's going down no matter what. Right. So what? Uh, and I'm wondering why he included like the the real question shouldn't be oh if he picked heads versus if he picked tails. It's why is he including a Others. mass murder versus just taking his <clears throat> own life? And and I think that well yeah. Uh, and I, I want I just want to like well, you'll see, he wants to, that he wants to be immortalized too. Uh, but I don't care if he wants to be immortalized. If you want to be immortalized, do something good with your life. Like Nelson Mandela or... Who the fuck knows about... How many people know more about Nelson Mandela and what he did than Ted Bundy and what he did? Because Nelson Mandela... I know more about Ted fucking Bundy than Nelson Mandela before I started this podcast. And so That's does everyone else. That's a provocative statement, and but so it's does, maybe true. I mean, how many documentaries does Netflix make about Nelson Mandela? How many do they make about Ted Bundy featuring Zac Efron's perfect body? I fucking hate you. I know more about Ted Bundy and everyone else does than I'm, I'm not. I'm not trying to. No, that's trash a very. You. But it is a good point. Provocative a, statement. Well, but it, true. and it's and you know what? And that's kind of a, a statement about society today. Yeah. Like, what is going to drive the most ratings? You're not going to want to hear about a peace warrior versus a murderer who was sexually assaulting people and went to different women with a cast and like, please help me. And then you went to a sorority house and murdered people like you, you like that's more sensationalized yeah. than a peace warrior. And guess you know? what, Jen? What? We're part of the problem. Well, you're yeah. right. <laughs> what do you think about that? That's also true. I'm not, I'm not going to say that the fuck the media for doing all this shit. What the fuck are we doing, bro? You're, well, are it, you not getting paid every month? Oh, what the fuck? Well, I'm just saying, dude. No, but you're not, you're, you're, you're not wrong. It is what it is. No, you're not wrong. <laughs> but at the same time, I feel like the, the show that we run, we run, we do try to look at different viewpoints. I know at least myself i try to to pull from different viewpoints i know nicole she has you know intelligent input you have intelligent input it's not like we're just sensationalizing well kind of all right you realize 
I flip this next coin, and it lands on tails. Oh wait, this is the the end of it. Devastation and destruction. If I flip this next coin and it lands on tails, there's gonna be devastation and destruction. <laughs> Fucking crazy, man. Sure. I'll cut off here. Okay. Here we go. Tails. Listen to this. Which means there's going to be a loss of a human life besides my own. I don't like that he's <laughs> smiling like that. That's fucking creepy, dude. That his haircut is terrible. Also, uh, agreed. But it's that's like, not the problem. The problem is the fact that he is that he is allowing that to happen. Like, look at that smile. I stopped it on the perfect one. What te that's tells, which means, folks, there's going to be a loss of a human life besides my own. And then he gives that grin. That that is the essence I want to show you with this episode that this photo right here, this live capture of him Can you is... take a screenshot of that and you should put that as... <laughs> no, I'm serious. You should put that as the title slide because this motherfucker left... Uh, this is it look at that look at that smile man that is that is fucking deranged is that not like, fucking it deranged i don't like that this motherfucker <laughs> thought that flipping a coin heads or tails should define if he kills other people along with himself so as this is playing this is him walking through the supermarket just to give you guys an idea of the supermarket probably looks like every other supermarket but notice a few things when you watch this video the exits well he took he did just look at the camera yeah at he looked the at the camera with the camera now the thing about this and we're talking about the murder later and everything else but he's working the night shift so this did happen early in the morning there was did only he work in the supermarket yeah yeah he's an employee there oh yeah he I didn't, didn't just go to that. a random supermarket okay in fact, his dad worked there, and his dad got him the job. Like Eric in Red Foreman in that 70s show. <laughs> yeah, which freaking Black Swan, what's her name? Mila Kunis. Mila Kunis does a sexy-ass fucking licking okay. on poon. Okay, just calm yourself down there, Poon buddy. licking, poon licking, wet dreams. But All also right. the guy that played Hyde is is, is being accused <laughs> of sexual assault. So what right now? Yeah, he's a Scientologist. And he's been accused of sexual assault. He's a Scientologist. Mm -hmm. And what has he been in other than that seventy show? Um, a couple of like indie films, but I couldn't tell you the name of them. Which one's a brother? Um, Danny Masterson. God. Hmm. Huh. Why is he filming all of the aisles? Well, he's trying to get a good... He's he's, he's trying to show people the outline of it, and is, he's going to plan stuff. So he's showing that like there are very minimal people when he's taking his life. Is this the video of the night that he took his life? No, this isn't the night. This is before. He's been playing this for months, and we're about to go into... So I'm going to talk a little bit about the murder first. And then we're going to get into his background and we're going to kind of go through it. We're, we, we drank a little too much and we're just trying to get through this, but it's a really interesting story. I'll put all these videos on talkmore.com. The murder actually happened early hour mornings, June 8th, 2017. This is the Weiss Markets Supermarket. That looks like it was the Delhi Prep Center. <clears throat> so down here in South Carolina, down here in South Carolina, we don't have Weiss. Y'all have that up there in Massachusetts? Weiss? No. Yeah, W-E-I-S markets. So down here, we got Harris Teeter, Piggly Wiggly, Kroger, Publix, Kroger. Lion. Well, Kroger's actually the umbrella company for yes. all of the other Kroger ones. Kroger owns, uh, I believe, Food Lion and Harris Teeter. Which I think Food Lion has went out of business. No, they're, no they actually just opened a few new stores. Oh, okay. Never mind. Bilo went out of business. Oh, Bilo. And there are a few Food Lions that opened up 
opened up in the buy low um, markets. Also, Lowe's Foods, which is owned by Lowe's Home Improvement. Is it? I it knew is. it was. Oh, I didn't know it was. It I was. knew it, it was. Mm-hmm. I knew they couldn't use that name. It's that, that name's too big to use it. So Lowe's Food and Lowe's Home Improvement are owned by the yeah. same. Which makes sense because they're right by each other here. Almost. Are they? Are, are they? I mean, not really, but. Yeah. I, I know, but they can't use that same. Uh, I don't know. I didn't know that, though. Mm-hmm. All right. So the murder happened early hour morning. We're going to go through the whole timeline. Don't worry about it. June 8th, 2017, Weiss Market Supermarket. Look at that cardboard bailer. If you're looking at the exits right there. Produce department. So he's Those definitely. receiving doors. He's definitely viewing all the potential exits, the potential escape plans, which is one of the reasons he's filming this. Because he is going to end up barricading all of the exits with wooden pallets, including doors like that. What? The alarm doors, stuff like that. He uses his car to actually push up against one of the exits, one of the bigger doors, so no one can get out. Now, he knows there's only five people working there that night, including himself. And he has a plan. He knows who he's going to kill Way before he does it, he knows exactly how it's going to go down. He he knows there's only going to be five people in the store because he works a night shift. So this is he. I mean, he gets in at twelve a.m. so midnight and this is, works it's till like twenty four hour store. No, no, no. It's not a twenty four hour store. No, but they have an overnight crew. They have an overnight oh, crew. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Very good. This is. Uh, I mean, this is kind of similar to the company that I work for. I mean, not the layout of the store, but I'm like looking at his filming. That looks like a receiving office. You have all the inventory oh, stuffed cheez up. It's. My favorite. Um, I know you're looking at Pallets and boxes. Now. I do love an extra toasty cheese. That is my There's favorite. There's a shit ton of cheeses um, back there. But. You know, it's not hard, especially oh, wait, you have the produce department. There's more where you can... So Randy Stair, at the time of his death and the murder, he was 24 years old. He was a night shift worker. So this isn't a 24 hour store. The store actually closes at 11 p.m. Then the night crew comes in, I guess, to stock. The weird thing about this case is, I mean, he's been working with these same people for a long time. I don't know. For a fact, but if you're working the night shift with four other people, I'm pretty sure all you guys are friendly with each other, right? You're not going in there and it's all tension and shit. I mean, you're, you're there. There's only four other people. The one person that survived actually was listening to her iPod. It doing kinda her thing. depends, honestly. On, I feel like, like for, for so for the for the staffing for a store that's my size, you need more than four people. But there's different area that we call them zones. So there's like zone one, which is electronics, snacks, food, uh, chemicals, and cleaning products. And there's zone two, which is seasonal. Then there's zone three, which is non-perishables, dairy, milk, all these things. So. You have, I mean, for a store that I work my size, you need more than four people, but um, it's not, it's not as large as the crew that works during the day, obviously, because during the day you have people that need to fulfill the, the needs of the customers. Like, so for, you know, grocery stores, they'll probably have a, a, a deli and a meat department and, um, you know, people that need to consistently stock during the day, like the milk, the eggs, um, regular stuff that you would need to, f- to fill out in the night crew kind of, um, at least in the f- store that I work at, <clears throat> they clear out empty pallets, they restock stuff, um, they pull things out of the steel with a forklift, things that are not um, on the floor. So it, it uh, you may have in a in a store that's my size of the store that I work. You may have more than four people, and that's not to say that you're not going to have workplace tensions. But it may it may be like j- limit how much you interact with people. Correct, because you have specific jobs, especially if it's in a time where payroll is tight, which also plays a factor in the amount of staffing that you can have. So a little bit about the murder real quick. We're going to go into the background. Then I'm going to go into the actual going in there, shooting, and the autopsy of Randy Stair at the end. But 
in in a nutshell, he walks in the store, CCTV camera catches him walking in the store for his 11 p.m. shift. So right when the store closes at 11 p.m., he is expected to arrive there. He arrives 10 minutes early. He starts his normal duties, stocking. He was a stalker, stuff like that. And then during his normal duties, he's also blocking the exits with pallets. And then he also blocks one of the exits with his car, stuff like that. At 1241, he re-enters the store after he walks out, goes to his car, blocks the exit. Comes back in the store at 1241 with a duffel bag containing two shotguns. He shoots 59 shots from two shotguns, which is was quite a lot. He kills three people, then he puts the gun in his own mouth and pulls the trigger. He shoots himself at the deli section, and police find him, his head obviously blown off. We don't have any photos of that nor do we have photos of the crime scene itself. Wow. The, the only crime scene photos you're really going to see is outside of the store. And it's honestly really hard to tell who he shot first because there's really, it's really, really uh, not available publicly. But there is one witness, a someone that was spared, as we're going to get to, she was the fifth person in the store that night, and she was the only survivor. Randy Stair actually walked up behind her after he had already killed, I believe, two of the other co-workers, and he stares at her for about five minutes. She's stocking shelves. She has her iPod in with her earbuds, and she has no idea that there is a guy with a shotgun standing right behind her. For some reason, he spared her. Mm. walked away and that's the one who called 911 it's very eerie but it is eerie we're gonna we're gonna actually see who this guy is i just wanted to give you an overview of the case i am gonna go in a little bit about the victims because they're they're wide ranging you have a a young uh mother of victoria brong you have a navy veteran Brian Hayes, which was, I believe, 47. I'll get to his exact age. Then you have a 65-year-old, Terry Lee Sterling. So very different ages. I mean, Victoria Brong, I'm pretty sure I'll get to her exact age in, in, the, in my notes, but I believe she was 28 or 29 or something like that. So a very wide-ranging. The township is the Eaton Township, E-A-T-O-N, but it's in the city of and I, I can't pronounce it. I don't even want to try. It's Tunka Hanok. Tunk T U N K Hanok. Tunk Hanok. Tunk Hanok. Very small town in Pennsylvania. Very small town. But this was a and you know the thing about this case is you know we see something like this that would happen in like a bowling alley per se and then it's like oh, why did they reopen the it it actually it actually seemed from the papers I was reading that the town banded together to reopen the store. Was it like the main it grocery was like, store of well, the town? Main grocery store, but it was also like family owned type of thing. It was part of the community. So they it felt like they wanted to not move on, but kind of just get everything back up, you know? Mm. So it's not like, ah, they opened up a week later. The whole town, it seemed banded together to... Right. Because, as you'll see, Randy Stair didn't just shoot three people in the store. He also caused, and I, I believe the exact quote is, extensive damage. He fires 59 shots. Oof. How many shots does it take to kill a person? Right. One, maybe yep. two. One, yeah. What, where are the rest of the shots going? He's firing at shelving, at the walls, at the mill. I mean, he's he's causing a huge amount of damage. Right. But the whole town, it seemed like banded together and worked to open the store back up. So is that that is how small the town is. Let's just say that if your town bounds binds together to open up your family grocery store. You in a small town. Yeah. <laughs> just, this isn't some conglomerate bullshit. I'm just saying. Anyway, um, let's talk about Randy Stair right quick. 
So I'm pulling this from several different newspapers, the Times Leader, Republican Herald, all kinds of stuff. I'll put all my sources on talkmare.com. But I'm going to talk about who he is. We'll get into him right now. The early years of Randy Stair, he preferred to be alone through elementary school. He always knew he was a loner. At the same time, he wanted to be included He wanted to be friendly with people, but he just could never fit in. He could never find his his click. Mm. Quote, I desperately wanted people to like me, but at the same time, leave me alone completely. It was something beyond being just an introvert. I felt just lost in quote. Now, all of these quotes I'm going to be saying and Nicole's going to be reading are coming directly from the videos that he left and they're extensive a lot of them were on youtube as we're going to get through his multiple channels he had talked about his life growing up and and he himself had said all the stuff that we're going to be talking about tonight in one video he talks about losing a friend in the first grade that was his first traumatic memory his friend actually moved away Mm. quote Matthew was the first friend that I felt I could tell anything to. It was emotional to me, and I really don't understand why, because I barely knew the kid. Mm. I just remember hugging him and fighting back tears on his last day at school. End quote. Let me let me get this off the let me get this off my mind before we go any further. This guy is in my mind, at least in my opinion, very narcissistic Mm. in his thought process. It's all about him, 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 him. And even in the videos, which there are extensive videos, he says stuff like, isn't it crazy? A week from now, I won't even be here. I'll be dead. Yet he doesn't mention any of the victims that he already knows he's going to take. He, He references stuff that makes me think that he is only thinking of himself type of thing. Does that make sense? A lot of these, I mean, who says this, that he, a friend that quote, I barely knew the kid moves away and he's fighting back tears. And that, that is traumatic to him. I I can't, I can't honestly process that. The kid didn't die. He just moved away and you didn't even know him. But yet he's trying to make this whole thing about himself and why he's doing this and is why he's like this and why he's got to kill these people. That is the whole senses I get with these videos. There's a lot of them. I watched them freaking awful to watch. Just just drone and on and on and on. Anyway, let me talk about why Randy Stair did this. And do you guys know this cartoon? Because he was obsessed with this cartoon, which is why he ultimately claims he killed these people. So this is his Twitter page. The cartoon that he fell in love with was Danny Phantom. Oh, I remember that show. Now, this is from the description of Danny Phantom. I'm just going to read it verbatim. I don't get it, man. It's a fucking cartoon. I tried so hard to get it, but it's very important that you guys understand that this is a very important cartoon for this case because this is the reason why he did it. Because of this one girl in this cartoon. I don't personally get it. I didn't watch this stuff when I was growing up. I did watch a little Pokemon, but I didn't get obsessed with it. Danny Phantom is an American animated action adventure television series created by Butch Hartman for Nickelodeon. The series follows Danny Phantom, Fenton. The city the series follows Danny Fenton, a teenage boy who after an accident with an unpredictable portal between the human world and the ghost zone becomes a human ghost hybrid and takes on the task of saving his town and the world from subsequent ghost attacks. You, I mean, it's a fucking cartoon. Anyway, I want you guys to see this now because this is the fucking reason he did this. 
We're going to get back to it. Trust me. But I wanted you guys to see this now. No, I do remember that cartoon, but I don't think I watched it. Like it was on. I think it was after our time. It was like right at the precipice of our uh, teenagehood. So it was kind of um, a little bit after the cartoons we were watching. We're going to get to that. But first, we got to get through because what what you're seeing now on the screen is Ember's Ghost Squad. That is a channel that Randy Stare had created. This is his brand piggybacking off the Danny Phantom. Oh, okay. Ember is that girl in the center there. That is who Randy Stair falls in love with, that cartoon. She uses okay. her guitar to zap Ghost or whatever. I don't know. In the cartoon. But it's very important you guys understand this because this is the reason he killed people, because of this cartoon. But he creates his own version of the cartoon, kind of like, um, what do you call it? Not fan art, but... Um, fan fiction. Fan mm-hmm. fiction. Yeah, you like our one friend. So our one friend has this fan fiction. It's Sonic the Hedgehog, but he's basically fucking everything. <laughs> what? <laughs> I yeah. don't know this friend. Do I know this friend? You do know this friend. Yeah, you do. I like him. He's a cool, he's a really cool dude. But he is serious about this Sonic the Hedgehog just having sex with everyone. You know, Tails was like the girlfriend of Sonic. Yeah. It's like real graphic. It's like Fifty Shades of Grey meet Sonic the Hedgehog, right? Yeah, and it's real fucking graphic. And he, he'll write these stories about Sonic plowing all these hedgehogs and shit. <laughs> it's fan anyway. it's fan fiction anyway the guy randy stair is doing the same thing but not sexual but he's cr- i don't get it but he's creating he's taking a cartoon and creating another cartoon or another storyline with the characters that's what's fan fiction about it right i mean i feel like a lot of <laughs> fan fiction accounts are sexual but i don't recognize this friend but that's not a story for right now. We will tell you later. All right. Let's talk about how he gets started on YouTube. Let's try to figure out who the hell this guy is. You've already seen his face. You're probably wondering who he is. 2008, he starts Pioneers Production on YouTube. That's his channel. He does have one channel before that, but it's not very big. Pioneers Production is his attempt to... Get YouTube stardom, if you will. He does little skits that are like parody, and he he references this other channel, which has like 40 fucking million viewers, and I don't get it. Smush? Smosh? Correct me if I'm wrong. Smosh? Smush? Something? They do little parody skits? It's not my type of comedy. I, I don't really... Get it? Do you guys get? You guys know what that is? Uh, yeah, anymore. it's fucking. This is his channel right here. So he starts out by creating a few characters. There's himself as Randy Stair, and then two other characters. One is named Froggy, which he finds this little frog at a supermarket. He cleans it up, and then it's a part of his channel. Can you remind me how old he is? At this point, he's 15, but he continues this channel until he's 20, I believe. And how old was he when this... He was 24 when he Uh shot up the supermarket. This is the Pioneer's production. This is what he was putting out on YouTube. And I guess he got a pretty good following. His channel's not there now, so I can't tell exactly how many people were watching it. But I know it was... He built up an audience. I don't care. I'm setting you straight, even if it kills me and sets the house on fire. I've got to do it! You have got to be kidding me! I'm a fucking frog! You want me to get educated? I've had it up to here with your attitude, your manners, your... Yeah, you guys are looking at the same thing I'm looking at. I don't fucking get it. He had one character, Froggy. The other one was Well. Apparently, Well was... He was having an affair with Well. Now, these are toys that he found. I'll put all his videos on TalkMore.com. You guys can, um... Watch him if you want. You mean you still haven't told them about us? What? What? No! There is no I. So, I, I don't get the comedy. Do you? Mm, uh, I mean, from thing. that three-second clip, it's hard to tell, but... 
I'm going to go with no. Yeah. All right. Anyway, sorry. I, uh, maybe I didn't put the right clips in there. No, I'm I'm just saying, I think if you don't get it, yeah, we don't we don't get it either. I mean, right. it's like using stuffed animals and try to make and figurines and making jokes like ventriloquism. But you don't know mm. how to use a puppet. I don't know. Anyway, 2008, he starts Pioneer Productions. He started this when he was 15. Quote, back then I was a 15 year old, but in reality, I was really a 12 year old. End quote. This is coming from his videos. So after he shuts down Pioneer's production, and I did the bunny years for that, he starts a new channel, but he closes down Pioneer's production by killing off his characters and then doing like an anthology series, a kind of look back at his few years doing Pioneer's production so he can create his new channel, which we're about to talk about. Let's, that's deep. I mean, you're going to yeah, kill off your other characters? Yes. Is, yeah, yeah. That's what I want you guys to see. It's, re- it's really deep. Is is a 15-year-old making these channels, let's be honest, not a lot of people were watching them. Right. Mm. Not a lot of people. But he did have a semi-audience, I would say. Maybe maybe 5,000 people, let's say. I mean, I, I don't know the exact numbers. Right. But let's say 5,000 people were watching them. So he started that when he was 15. There was a couple of things that happened to him when he was getting out of his teens that made him change his perception on his content that he was creating. But to do that, he had to kill off his two characters. His two characters were Froggy and well, that mm. was he made. I'm telling you, he made video like a lot of fucking videos with these stuffed animal things, right? These fucking things. I do not get it. He made a lot of videos with them. He got a small audience, but now he's got to kill them off because he's going to start a new channel. So this is him killing off the. His previous characters. Yes, exactly. Because she told me to. Whoa. That's dark. He actually severs his finger in this, doing this, and he has to get a few surgeries to fix it. But yeah, he kills off his character because, and let me go through the timeline. I, I know this is hard to, for us 30 fucking something year olds to fucking understand, but... Oh, I and, hate that term, even though it's true for all of us. Yeah. In February 2012 is when things really started to change. Now, I'm pulling all of this from his own words. He did a whole series about himself growing up and all his troubles and all this shit. To be honest, and I'm not trying to be mean, sounds like he had a fucking great life. Just saying. Anyway, February 2012. A car accident happened from a senior in high school. So a senior in high school that he also barely knew was in a car accident. And and it was a fatal car accident. The guy, the kid died. His brother. So Randy Stair has. This is confusing. I know it's confusing. Randy Stair's younger brother was actually in the same class with him. For some reason, February 2012, when this kid had died as a senior in a car accident when Randy Stair was already in college, this event of this random student in high school getting in a car accident and dying is a thing that started him into his darkness. Mm. He knew this kid barely, but he didn't talk to him. He wasn't friends with him at all. He just was a, kid at his high school which i remember dude there was like three kids before i graduated that had died in fucking car accidents you know what i'm saying like how yeah. and this is the first time i'm thinking about it since doing this is being in high school is that kind of like telling you this kid's psychology a little bit well i mean it depends on the size of your high school like i remember when i was in high school there was a there was a senior who um who who passed away in a car, but not a car accident. He had like a heart something. He had some type of, of, of physical 
attack and he passed away and that was the only person who died while I was in while the, the four years that I was in high school so it was a major event especially coming from a, a very small high school so if you're in a high school with two to three thousand people it's it, yeah it's gonna affect you but it's not gonna affect you the same way that a high school with 200 people in your graduating class is gonna affect you like last year at the high school that I work at, there was a student who passed away. He had a heat stroke and he was a junior and it, it, it affected people. But today was he drinking was- energy drinks? Cause that is a huge thing with these kids, man. They're, they're dying. They're, they're drinking all these fucking monsters and they're sitting out in the sun. I You're couldn't want to talk. No, I know, but this is a thing. These high school kids are killing themselves. I like couldn't that. tell you that. That specific, I do know he went to high, uh, that he went to football practice, had a heat stroke, and then went home and and, and passed away. Um, that was last year. But I, I don't want to see people. I don't want to. I I definitely, definitely do not want to say that people forgot about it. But in a class of five hundred plus people versus a school of a. Uh, that size plus maybe you know 500 to three to to a thousand people it just kind of depends on the circumstances so yeah that could affect him as a as a you know recent graduate especially if his younger brother was friends with him or knew the student who passed away in a car accident it just kind of depends on the circumstances like death sadly is something that does affect high schoolers all right so he starts to blame this random car wreck of this high school student on his grades starting to slip in college. Quote, he started doing, or quote, I started doing shitty in all my classes, end quote, because of this. This is also the reason that he wanted to push to change his new, to change his old channel, to end his old channel and start a new one. He didn't know what yet. January 2013, we're fast forwarding one year. Quote, it was the ultimate demise of my mind, end quote. Another kid in one of his college classes was also killed in a car crash. And when he found out about it, that was the ultimate demise of his mind. So he started making the horror, dark horror comedy skits. They started to get darker. That's where you see him stabbing the frog and stuff like that. So, that was the ultimate demise of his mind. One month later, February 2013, he himself gets in a car accident. This guy just needs to stay out of cars. What shitty luck with automobiles. Anyway, in 2013 in February, he gets in a car accident. He is sandwiched between two cars. His car is totaled in a parking lot. Quote, that sent me into an area that I've never really been before, where I started to get ideas like never before, end quote. I'm going to be fucking honest, dude. Seriously? For real? That is fucking pushing you over the edge? You wouldn't fucking last a goddamn day in fucking Afghanistan. Mm -hmm. Holy tits, man. Are you fucking kidding me? You wouldn't last a fucking minute going through some of the shit that I went through. Not only me, but a lot of the other people that have seen a lot more than me. You wouldn't last a fucking second. Yep. A fucking second, dude. Holy fuck. The reason I'm saying that is because people, these kids on this internet are idolizing this guy now. That and That's what he wanted, obviously. But they're trying to keep Ember's ghost squad alive and... I don't understand. It I don't at all. fucking either, man. I don't either. Half of his videos of, are of him singing emo songs in the car. Oh my emotions! I'm not making fun of him, but dude, goddamn, you gonna fucking kill people and go into a spiral because some guy you barely knew died in a fucking car accident? Are you fucking serious? What the fuck is wrong with these people? It's these fucking kids these days, man. It's the fucking kids. What's wrong with these fucking goddamn kids? Well, they don't know how to process their Jesus emotions. Fuck. But if you want a real answer, that's exactly what it is. They don't know how to deal with Jesus. the situations that are going on in life. They don't know. And if it's if it's parents that think that, oh, they just, they can work it out themselves. No, they, they need some help with it. They need help processing their emotions. 
They need help. They need help. Understanding. <sighs> they, you know, they Jeez. need to. It, it, it's it's sad. I mean, I have students who are afraid to be in high school because of the amount of people that are there in the in COVID in the past couple of years. They don't know how to adjust We're to being in soft, their school. fucking soft, man. It's all, and you just got to, you can't say anything nowadays and you just got to, man, fuck this shit, dude. Like, fucking grow some goddamn skin, man. We should do what Israel does and make every motherfucker in this country serve at least two years in the military. That'd toughen some fucking people up. This shit, this shit, you want to see some bullshit? This is Randy Stare. This is the motherfucker that was killing people. This guy right here. Look at this fucking video. What happened? Whoever would have thought it was 24 when he did this a cartoon character would cause this to happen. No, no, uh, you caused this to happen. You uh, piece of shit. Exactly. Exactly. Ah! Fucking exactly. <laughs> no one caused this, but you motherfucker, you should have fucking just killed yourself and not fucked with anyone else. Holy yes. fuck, dude. Jesus. A cartoon fuck. had nothing to do with her mental illness. It's an excuse for he... all goes back to her. He's... No, it doesn't all go back to her. It goes back to fucking You're you. You're looking for someone to blame. I know. God fucking damn it. Take goddamn response to fucking goddamn ability, motherfucker. More than just a cartoon. No, nope. I'm she's just you. a cartoon. Not in one of she's these. She's actually just a cartoon. Not in one of these videos does he uh, ever mention the three people he plans to kill for fucking months. Besides, when he talks about, oh shit, I don't know if this one guy is going to transfer to a management position. It's going to mess up my plans. But he talks about his whole life growing up. How my daddy was so mean to me. He lives in a big fucking house in Pennsylvania. His mama, his daddy, they work hard and they're fucking raising this piece of shit. Fuck this guy, man. Look Before at this shit. Ends, I'll be dead. Legit dead. Thank well, you for good, all the motherfucker. Nights. Thank you for all the live streams. Thank you for all the I hate support, this shit, all the feedback, no matter how good or bad it was. And I hope I've helped make a difference for you. And sadly, Narcissist, I'll never know motherfucker. All the, all the lives I've changed, helped change rather. I'll never know. Uh, it, I no. shudder to think about whose life you I, fucking changed, dude. Dude, it's the fucking mindset. Is this the video this before he goes in and kills yes! people? Yes. It's the fucking mindset of this new generation. They don't fucking think about anybody but their fucking selves. I, oh, it's, you know, this is my legacy. This is, yeah, yada, yada, yada. What about the mother that you fucking ripped away from her daughter? You shouldn't be idolized. You should be fucking demonized. You're a piece of fucking shit, okay? You can't blame, and he blames mental illness a lot. Oh, fucking the Columbine shooters, they... I'm sympathetic because they had mental illness. Did they know that they did they know that it was wrong to fucking go into school and shoot up all these fucking kids? Did you know it was wrong to go into a fucking grocery store, take a shotgun and shoot a mother and a veteran and a fucking granddad? Did you know that you did? Oh, well, then you can't fucking blame mental illness, you piece of fucking trash. I do have to say, though, at the same time as all of this is going on, do, while I do not support his goals or whatever is going on, like, was his family even, like, did they offer any psychological help? Like, did they know that he was suffering? Like, what what, what, what was going on? Like, he, he needs, like, he wasn't, people like this, people he, like this, and not necessarily just him, but like, like even the people in his comments that are viewing, um, that are supporting him, like, like it, it's so hard because you see, I mean, especially in my role, you see students who are struggling with mental illness and struggling with thoughts of self harm or destruction, and they don't know the resources that they have. Even if people are leaving comments, though, like, what's he gonna like? Okay, someone's going to leave a comment say like you should really get help. You can't guarantee that he's going to read the comment right. or see he's going to do even anything. Even if he does see the comment, it's but, like okay, well, what, but that's that's, that's not push, actionable. That's pushing it off on society. So a lot of the articles I read was like, oh, we should have seen the signs. He uploaded all the and you. I'll go through 
his Twitter, but he basically says he's going to shoot up and all this stuff. Oh, society should have done a better job in seeing that he had trouble. All this stuff. Well, you know what? Society has their own shit to fucking deal with, man. I have shit I got to goddamn deal with all goddamn you know day. What? I'm not going to fucking watch out with this guy. How about you don't fucking go shoot up a goddamn supermarket? But you like know what? everyone else is taught not to do. But here's the thing that is very troubling is that his supporters and people that view his videos are probably people that empathize with him who don't know how to get the resources for proper help. And help, also are probably who don't encouraging him, the, Yeah, who are encouraging him because they're agents of chaos or who are sarcastic as fuck and don't really think that he's going to go through with it there were i mean like, yes society yeah, and did. if he was 12 or 10 years old then i can understand that but he's 24 years old when yeah, he shot up he the was supermarket. 12 or 24 years old it doesn't fucking matter if you are i mean if you're posting this content on the website i don't care how old you are like there's someone yeah, but you can't expect it. society to to take the burden for I'm that. I'm not saying because that. Because that just pushes it off failed. on... Me- but it's not society you. failed. This guy fucking failed. He did. Not society. It's not our responsibility to fucking keep tabs on all these fucking people. No, it's not our all of our responsibility to keep tabs on these people. But 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 it's just it, it's, I don't know. I don't I'm know. sorry. I'm just saying this it's guy. Very frustrating. From what I've seen, this guy had a fucking great life. A fucking great life. You should see his shooting range that he has at his house. He's got like ten acres of that motherfucker. Nice area in Pennsylvania. It's just some fucking narcissist, man. I'm sorry, dude. I didn't mean to get off on a tangent. I just fucking hate this shit. He kills a mother. He just became this evil, dark ghoul. <laughs> I just oh, shit. became sorry. this evil, dark. <laughs> sorry, Jen. I didn't mean to cut you off. Go ahead. Say what you're going to say. I'm sorry. I won't cut I don't you even off. Remember. No, just say it. No, I'm no, sorry. Honestly, I don't remember. I'm just pissed off. This motherfucker just. This is what's wrong with fucking society, man. This shit is just ghoul. The warning signs were always there. This is before he. The warning signs were always there. You know, you know, you know, you're gonna do something so wrong. Someone, I mean, like, not only did he fail, but like, if he has how many viewers did you say? Thousands or yeah, hundreds? but you, that, that's the problem when you when you say, oh, you can't just blame this guy. A hundred and ten percent of the blame should be on this asshole. It it, It should. But it's not when you say, well, society should have seen the signs. Motherfucker, you knew what you did. You planned it for months. It's not society's fault. But he, in this video right here, he's saying the warning signs were there. Y'all should have caught it. It's not my fault. But that's the fucking view of this new generation. But he, but, but I agree with you, though, because he is the one that carried out this crime. But at the same time, how many, how many people You're watch this? Much. How many people, how many people watch this video? I mean, how, how many people <laughs> reported something that was going on even if even his best I mean, friend I, I don't report. Yeah, I don't care who it is his his best friend who what are you gonna report had, what are you gonna report oh this guy is talking crazy he ain't saying I'm gonna you be can here do a wellness check I mean even if you check in with them personally like hey like what the fuck is going on you're talking about all this darkness and this sadness like you can be there for a support for them he's clearly struggling with something I'm Excuse me. I am not excusing his behavior at all. He fucked up. He he murdered people. Oh, I got the hiccups. But like someone who is watching this, I'm not putting the, the whole responsibility <gasps> excuse me, on them, but they should Jesus Christ, you alright? Yeah, I got the hiccups. I don't know what's wrong with me. They're probably nothing but kids watching this shit. I'm not trying to be mean, but uh, but I mean like he has the I mean, who but I'm just going to say, yes, people who are watching could have done something, but ultimately it's his own fucking responsibility to not go shoot up a grocery store. Agreed. Yeah. He's an, he, instead, he's broadcasting his intent and probably maybe thinking, hoping somebody cares enough to say something <laughs> that's the, to that's him. That's the thing. And you know what? They fucking don't. And that's not on the people that are watching because they probably don't take it all that seriously. No, you're right. You're and absolutely no one cares right. about anyone let me just tell you no dude, you care about your fucking self you care about yourself that's how you survive motherfucker if i wanted to kill myself 
I'm not going to say, oh my God, I'm thinking about kill my, killing myself and then hoping one of you lovely, lovely people out there will come comfort me, okay? Because I know that might not fucking happen. Right. And I don't want to put my life on that shit. Not that I don't love you guys and that I don't think you guys would do that or, or wouldn't come forward and tell me because Marty has. Thank you, Marty. But I'm saying I'm not going to put my fucking life on it. You know what I'm saying? No one cares about you. No one cares about me. No one cares about Nicole. No one cares about Jen. Well, a lot of people care about Jen. Don't fuck with Jen. I'm sorry, Jen. I didn't mean to cut you off, man. I'm just... No, uh, but it's... Your views you know, are so much different than mine, but just go ahead and, and tell us everything now that your hiccups are gone. <laughs> I just, mic. No, I just think that, I mean, he's he's out there and saying, like, here are the warning signs. You saw the warning signs. and It's I just, a cry for help. It is a cry for help. And I'm not putting the responsibility Actually, on anyone else. It's a, not necessarily a cry for help. It's a cry for fucking attention. Yeah, exactly. You're exactly right. But I'm not saying he's in the right at all. I just want to put that out there. I'm not saying he's in the right. He's not. I mean, he fucking killed a bunch of people. And I'm not putting the responsibility on those who are watching. But it seems like he... he it's it's almost sad to me that he didn't have an outlet, either a friend or a parent or or someone and a trusted adult at a school at school or at work, someone that he could share his pain with. But he felt comfortable enough broadcasting it on YouTube, hoping that someone would be like, hey, like, are you OK, man? Yeah, that's fucking sad. But at the end of the day, Nicole's right. Like he. He did that. He did whatever he did. You know? The kit, I'm going to be honest, looking at even the sound quality of his videos, he does have talent and he could have done something great. Even though the project he was working on wasn't getting much traction, that's just how it is. But he did, he did have the... I guess the time, I you know, let's be honest, he didn't have dates or friends or anything. He sat there and I get it, man, because I sit there on the computer all the time and edit and try to make the best and best and best. So he could have made something fucking great. You know what I'm saying? But for whatever reason, he took this road instead. And I mean, maybe if he just killed himself, then I would be more sympathetic, but... You fucking kill other people, man. Not cool, dude. I mean, it's not cool to kill yourself either. Yeah, I know, but... You know, it's not cool to kill a mother, oh, well, a brand well, new well, mother. Well, certainly that's not cool. I'm not excusing that. I'm just saying There's that. a There's a 16-minute obituary video on the mother. It's just pictures and music. I'll link to it on talkmore.com. It's, it'll change. It's basically showing her... In like all of her happy states, it's it's a regular person, a twenty eight year old mother who has it will you know just her main mission in life is for her child. It's it's so sad. It's the truth. It's the honest to goddess truth. And you heard me right. I said goddess. I didn't say God. I said goddess. But I don't believe in God. I believe in a goddess, which is Ember. Dad, I can drop f***ing dead. I'm your f***ing kid, and you don't know anything about me. You don't know how I truly feel about anything, and I can't tell you that stuff. And then all he f***ing seemed to care about was, like, me getting a full-time job and making money and then trying to move out of the f***ing house and start my own life and all yeah, this Yeah, it, it sounded like well, an 18-year-old. <laughs> kind of common if you're 25 and living with your parents, probably. But, I mean, I'll, yes, I agree with that. But at the same Nicole, time... Nicole, how is your dad to you? I, I was just going to say, you don't see me shooting up anybody. Um, I'm quite successful and have been living on my own since the day I moved out from high school. So... <sighs> You know, you know what? There's that. Kudos to that. And you know what? Yeah, I don't have a perfect relationship with my dad either. But you know what? That's that's that. But on on another on another level, like here's another example of him. You know, reaching out for something. And I'm not saying this to be sympathetic with the killer. I am not. I'm just trying to take this from a mental health professional. And, and you know what? He's he's reaching out for something. 
And you wish that he would have talked about this with a trained professional. Yeah, 100%. Of, he should have a counselor. Absolutely. And a therapist. I, I, mm-hmm. Absolutely. Because this, if he had someone to talk to, even it was a school counselor, a principal, a teacher, a coach, a count, uh, like a therapist outside of school, a boss at his job. If he, you know, had someone to talk to about this, maybe this wouldn't have happened. But he clearly was saving his trauma for the video for the YouTube videos to gain views. And then that's that's fucked up. That's foobar. You know, that is foobar. And I know that John will say I'm not using that term correctly, <laughs> but I'm well, using more it. more of like soldiers get blown up with IEDs. Correct. But. <laughs> it is. Shit. But you know what? It is. It is <laughs> fucked up. But you know what? It's just I, I don't know. You know what? It's right, like let's get he on has trauma it. that he needs to deal with, and he's not dealing with it. Let's let's fucking barrel through this shit because your dog is fucking starving. I can tell. Goddess, who he was talking about, was this Ember. She is the hot chick right there with the guitar. I mean, it's not even like hentai shit. If it's hentai, maybe you can understand. But so this is what he wore when he went to shoot up the supermarket. It's our time to rise, which is kind of ironic to me because I think that's the University of Phoenix logo. <laughs> Time to rise or rise above or some bullshit. I don't know. I mean, I didn't any, really pay anything attention. to do with like something that's mythology, myth- mythological <laughs> or Phoenix is you just associate with the University of Phoenix. So it's fine. This is him getting his I guns. Got it. I fucking got it. Two Mossberg 500 shotguns. <laughs> fucking got it. It's on the back seat back there somewhere. I don't know if you can see it, but fucking got it. Two. I now have two. Two pump action 12 gauge shotgun Mossberg 500s. This one's 18 and a half inches on the barrel. The other one was 20. 20 and a half. One of the two. I don't know. But I fucking got it. There's a YouTube video out there that somebody made because a lot of his videos show him target practicing. He is fucking terrible. He's a terrible shot. And this just makes me sad. But it's like he's so excited for this and it just makes me upset. Like, personally <laughs> yeah. yeah it's pretty shitty anyway let's get through this I, i'm gonna not go through that whole video but let's um skip forward to the next slide this is his twitter feeds of this girl named ember which is a cartoon character so all of these twitter twitter tw- uh, twitter accounts or whatever you tell them they're all him so ember's ghost squad is him him and it's his brand. He would make all these cartoons, which I'm not going to play because we ain't got time. He would make all these cartoons, fan fiction about Danny Phantom and this one specific girl named Ember. And he would make, I mean, he was really talented with it. That was the thing. He would make all these cartoons with his computer or whatever. And he was actually really talented. I'm not going to lie. But all these Instagram or what are they called? Twitters. All these Twitters are him. So tweets. even the tweets. They're him, even though they got different names. So he would interact with himself as different characters. So, for instance, Harmony Ingram, Harmony Ingram, a Twitter, uh, one of the ghosts, one of the Ember's ghosts, said, um, "Bitch, don't cry. I make others cry. If there's any, and then another one says, if there's anyone who, I mean, they're just talking back and forth. But it's all him. But it's all him. He's liking his own. That's weird. Yeah, it's really weird. It's really weird. Anyway, the newspapers say, well, why didn't anyone see this? Is because he would say something like, 17 days is your calendar marked." Hashtag EGS, hashtag big things, hashtag June 7th, hashtag, hashtag D-E-K-H-A, which I couldn't figure out what that was. Was that when he killed the people? Yeah. So here's some more. Um, I mean, guys, this is... It. Ready to die, the Westboro High Massacre. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know what that's about. He He started posting right before, a few days before... The Westboro High Massacre. I, I think he was trying to get people to think he was going to shoot up a school or his local school. I, I don't really get that. I don't really understand why he did that. But 
he kept saying that, are you ready for this day? Are you ready for this day? Are you ready for this day? And keep in mind, he's been playing this for months. It's June 6th. Ember's Ghost Squad on tw- Twitter says, you don't want to miss this. It's going to be historic. I hope you all enjoy tomorrow's video. Be on the lookout for it around 11.45 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. That is a video that you just saw about. That was his suicide video or whatever, you know. He posts that right before he walks back into the grocery store. So he does his duties, goes back out to his car, blocks the exit, posts that video, and then goes back in and shoots everyone up. So this is his Ember Ghost Squad suicide tapes. And guys, if you don't know what I'm talking about, I'll put all this on talkmore.com. It's really a lot. It's kind of more confusing than anything. But so he posts his suicide tapes. And I have all those. If you guys want to see those, uh, this is a photo of him right here uh, with his uh, pump action shotgun. All right, let's go through the timeline real quick. I know it's kind of running late, but I'm pulling this timeline from the Times Leader, June 9th, 2017. Randy Stair started his scheduled shift. And I should say, at this time, he's not going by Randy Stair anymore. He's going by Andrew Blaze. He starts his shift at 11 p.m., normal duties. He starts blocking all the exit doors at 11.37. CCTV shows him leaving the store and returning to his car. He moves his car to the building to block the emergency exit. He grabs a 100 rounds, including the, two, including the duffel bag with both pump-action shotguns. He re-enters the store at 12.41. He locks the door behind him. He also, and he starts shooting, starts shooting the four peop- the three people that he planned to shoot. He also does, quote, extensive damage to the interior by, quote, shooting up different aisles and counters, end quote. Now, this is an interesting phenomenon that I've seen not only in this case, but I've seen in a couple others, too. I don't know if we actually talked about this, but it's kind of insane, and I, I want to blame... Video games, movies, whatever the fuck you want to blame. It's kind of an interesting phenomenon. I don't know what it's called, but he actually shot propane tanks thinking that they would explode. And if you watch his uh, videos of him target practicing at his house, he shoots propane tanks and they don't explode. But I've seen this. I've seen this a few times where these mass shooters try to shoot propane tanks and they just think they're going to explode. It doesn't work like that at all. Uh, If you shoot up, you remember I told you the other day, Nicole, that when you, the car, like if a car flies off a cliff or hits a tree, like you see in a movie, nine, like 99.9% of the time it's not going to fucking explode. The physics aren't there. Right. There's, there's a couple things you need for a propane tank to explode. And the fact that he's a YouTuber and couldn't look this up himself is beyond me. Yeah. And the fact that he has videos of him target practicing at his own house, shooting a propane tank and it not exploding kind of makes me think he's, I don't know, dumb or something. But anyway, a propane tank will not explode If you shoot it, that does not happen because there's a couple things you need. What do you need to uh, ignite something? You need oxygen. Mm -hmm. A propane tank is sealed with nothing but propane. Correct. The oxygen isn't introduced until the bullet enters the propane tank, but the the but the bullet is going so fast that by the time it exits, then the oxygen comes in behind it. You also need a, an ignition source. Mm-hmm. So a bullet could potentially uh, do that if it was hot enough. Mm-hmm. However, there's no oxygen in it when the bullet's gone. A propane tank just being shot outright with a bullet will never explode. Doesn't happen. But for some reason, kids think that. And he wrote extensively about how he was planning to do that. He says in one of his online journals that he wants to get a cage full of propane tanks 
outside of the store, shoot them and cause, quote, mass destruction. Quote, if I find the key, it changes everything, end quote. It doesn't work like that. The only way a propane tank will explode is if you have an incendiary round that will ignite as soon as it hits the surface. Mm -hmm. That is the only way it's going to explode. Unless you have like a a seal of like um, some accelerant surrounding the propane tanks that you're shooting and then that heat goes into the tank. Well, yeah, if a fire comes up and burns it, yeah, it'd explode. But I'm talking about just shooting a right. propane tank. Yeah, no, no, you're right. But the, these kids, they think that that is how the world works. It doesn't work like that. Well, and Hollywood fact, works that way. But the fact that this kid not only tried it himself in multiple videos and it didn't work, and he's a YouTuber and couldn't even fucking look that shit up, which there's a lot of videos on YouTube about guys shooting goddamn propane tanks and not exploding. Why the fuck didn't you look that up? Why did you think that would work in the first place? Mm -hmm. That makes me think you're a fucking idiot, man. Right. Well, he is that. (laughs) So, But if you see a car on a movie that crashes into a tree, it's not going to fucking explode. You remember that family guy where like the the horse fucking explodes? (laughs) It's the same shit. Yep. On May 22nd, he writes, quote, get pissed, gear up, have fun, end quote. The last entry on June 5th, quote, I'm so ready to die. Two more full nights and that's it. I've officially accepted that Wednesday night will be the death of me, end quote. Mm -hmm. At 1237, he sends his mother what Jeff Mitchell, the Wyoming County DA, says, quote, was basically a suicide note, end quote. But his he sends his mother that note, but his mother was asleep, didn't see it. He ends up firing 59 shots, 49 live unfired rounds were found throughout the store. Let me go back to this Ember thing real quick. I don't really get it, but I, I want to at least put it in the podcast. Let me break it down real quick. Randy Stare wasn't uh, religious, but he did believe in fate contracts. So everyone is put on earth for a reason, for a purpose. And once you carry out that purpose, then you can go to heaven or wherever the fuck. In his, in this, I know we didn't get into the fucked up world of this guy that much, but in his mind, heaven was the Ember's ghost squad. Even though he created this whole fan fiction himself, he actually thought that he was going to die and join his girlfriend. And yes, I said his girlfriend, his the love cartoon? of cartoon? Yeah, the cartoon. Here, just watch this. Oh, you see that in the background, all these pictures. Yeah, it's creepy as fuck. I just kept looking at her, and it's like, she got it. She understood me. This is Ember he's talking about. Understood her. We had feelings for each other. And it just, it was way more than just a simple connection. It was life-changing. I just, I went into a zone that I had never really been in before. Well, it's a cartoon, so that's kind of weird. I mean, I've had feelings about <laughs> a real person I like mean, that. I mean, like I'm but... saying, dude, hentai, if she's getting butt and eggs, uh-uh. Showing, you know, them hentai, they got some big old titties, but mm. I'm just saying. <laughs> Nicole's looking at me like she's going to stab me in the neck. <laughs> Nicole looks <laughs> concerned. This Look. close to my baby. Well, Ember was my baby. She's not my baby anymore. She's my queen. <laughs> Mackenzie's my baby. <laughs> Mackenzie, <laughs> baby. <laughs> actually, the shotguns were called uh, Rachel and Mackenzie. He actually named his shotguns. Guys, there's more we can go in, but I, I'm done, man. We've been, we we got way off track. I'm sorry. Humanity is disappointing. <laughs> I'm just gonna say it. Sorry, guys. We got kind of drunk. Got a way off track here. It's confusing. This, this episode alone was three hours. We got a. Was it? Yeah, we've been recording since three hours. But anyway, that is the Randy Staircase. Thank you, Malachi, for requesting that. We'll see you next time. This is Talk Mary Me Podcast. My name's John. I'm here with. My name's John. I'm here with Jen and.
My name is John. I'm here with Jen and Nicole. Until next time, good night, you lovely, lovely people. <laughs>